Here we're gonna look at a nice calculation for a closed form for cosine of pi over five. So everyone knows the cosine of pi over two and pi over four and pi over three and even pi over six, but this is a less common value of cosine, even though you get a pretty nice value out of it. So we're gonna get started with a really trivial step. So we're gonna take this cosine of pi over five and I'm gonna write it as one half cosine of pi over five plus cosine of pi over five. So it's pretty clear that we can do that because cosine of pi over five plus cosine of pi over five is just twice cosine of pi over five multiplied by a half is just one copy of that. So we did the age old mathematics trick of multiplying by one. Now we're gonna do another pretty old math trick and that is add zero. The version of zero we are going to add is so that it can make these cosine pi over five things a little bit more reasonable to work with. So to this, I will add i times sine of pi over five and here I will subtract i times sine of pi over five, like that. Then we can do some grouping, maybe these two terms and then these two terms, and then apply Euler's formula to write them as complex exponentials. So notice now we have that this is one half of e to the i pi over five plus e to the minus i pi over five. It's gonna be kind of useful to write this with a positive exponent, but we can easily write that with a positive exponent because we know that sine and cosine are two pi periodic. So let's maybe just go ahead and point that out like this. e to the i theta is equal to e to the i theta plus two pi. So that tells me I can add two pi in here and I have the same thing. So if I add two pi to minus pi over five, well that's gonna be 10 pi over five, minus pi over five, or nine pi over five. So that means I can take this and rewrite it as one half, e to the i pi over five, plus e to the i nine pi over five, like that. Next up, I'll take this pi over five and this nine pi over five and rewrite them so that the numerators are multiples of two pi. That's gonna let us use the theory of roots of unity a little bit more easily. So I'll take this guy right here and write it as two pi over 10. Again, I just multiplied by two over two there. And then this guy right here is going to be 18 pi over 10. 10 like that. Okay, but then I can introduce some notation and rewrite this as one half zeta plus zeta to the ninth power, where zeta is this primitive tenth root of unity given by this guy right here, which is e to the i two pi over 10. So now let's maybe bring this up and we'll move on. So on the last board, we saw that cosine of pi over five was half zeta plus zeta to the nine, where zeta was that primitive 10th root of unity, e to the i, two pi over 10. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this zeta plus zeta to the nine, and I'm gonna call that x, and I'm gonna see some nice behavior that x has with regard to its square. So let's take x squared. Notice that's gonna be zeta plus zeta to the nine quantity squared. So that'll give us zeta squared plus two times zeta to the 10. But since zeta is a 10th root of unity, we know that zeta to the 10 is just one, so that's just plus two. And then finally plus zeta to the 18, like that. But next, again, we know that zeta to the 10 is the same thing as one, which means zeta to the 18 is the same thing as zeta to the eighth power. Now we're gonna take this expression, separate the two into one plus one, and then reorder things a little bit. So we're gonna write this as zeta squared plus one plus zeta to the eight plus one, like that. Okay. Next, I'm gonna use the fact that I know that z to the 10 minus one factors in terms of its roots of unity. So in fact, we can write this as z minus one, which is like z minus zeta to the zero power, times z minus zeta times z minus zeta squared, all the way up to z minus zeta to the nine. 
So those are all of the roots of this polynomial equation. But then on the other hand, we can factor z to the 10 minus 1 over the real numbers in the following way. This is equal to z minus 1 times z plus 1 times z to the 4th plus z cubed plus z squared plus z plus 1. And then an alternating version of that as well, which is z to the 4th minus z cubed plus z squared minus z plus 1. So if you're psyched, you can foil that all out and you'll see that you will re-achieve this z to the 10 minus one. Okay, so next up, we can see which ones of these roots come from which of these factored polynomials. And then you can see that this polynomial has roots which are the primitive fifth roots of unity. And in terms of our zeta, which is a primitive 10th root of unity, the primitive fifth roots of unity will be zeta squared, zeta to the fourth, zeta to the sixth, and zeta to the eight. So that means that those guys are the roots of this polynomial, which are right above. Next up, we see that if we plug zeta squared in for z, then we'll have a zeta squared term here, we'll have a zeta to the eighth term here, and then we'll have a plus one here. Three out of the five terms from this polynomial, which we know is equal to zero after being evaluated at zeta squared. The only two terms that are unaccounted for are this z squared and this z cubed. So that tells us that we can replace this guy right here, which I underline in red, with the negative of this guy right here after being evaluated at zeta squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is gonna be minus, so we'll have zeta squared squared, so that's gonna be zeta to the fourth, and then we'll have zeta squared cubed, so that's gonna be zeta to the sixth. So we're gonna write this as zeta to the sixth, and then we finally have this plus one which was outside of the parentheses. Okay, so maybe I'll underline this in red just to see where this came from as well. Okay, so now that we have that, let's bring this over here and then we'll finish it up. On the last board, we had written our x squared as minus zeta to the four plus zeta to the six plus one, where zeta was our primitive 10th root of unity. Furthermore, we factored z to the 10 minus one into these four polynomials, and we noted that this polynomial had the primitive fifth roots of unity as its roots. So that's zeta squared, fourth, sixth, and eighth. And then this alternating polynomial has zeta, zeta cubed, zeta to the seven, and zeta to the nine as the roots. Next, we want to notice that z to the 10 minus one is an even polynomial. So that's easy to see. This is an even polynomial. So if we have a root of this polynomial, then the negative of that root will also be a root of this polynomial. So what that tells us is that minus zeta to the fourth and minus zeta to the sixth are roots. And so we can see that they're most definitely not roots of z minus one, z plus one, or this guy right here. So that means they must be roots of this portion of the polynomial over here. So that means minus zeta to the fourth and minus zeta to the sixth are on that list over there. Next up, we can just compare which quadrants these lie in to see that it's pretty obvious that they have to be this root and this root. In other words, zeta and zeta to the nine. But notice that zeta plus zeta to the nine is exactly equal to x. So if we distribute this minus sign through, then we have that this is equal to x plus one. But now we can easily solve the quadratic equation given by x squared equals x plus one. We'll have two roots, one positive root and one negative root. But since cosine of pi over five is positive, it's in the first quadrant, we know that we must only keep the positive root. And that positive root can be easily calculated as one plus the square root of five over two, which is otherwise known as the golden ratio phi. So putting this all together, we see that cosine of pi over five is one half this golden ratio or this golden ratio over two. And that's a good place to stop.